Well, then you just, uh, it seems you, had, you saw my script here. You talked about uh, uh, conspiracy theory. And we know that uh, <clears throat> conspiracy theories uh, are best seen against the, against uh, the background of, uh, against the, the establishment. Uh, the establishment could be the media, the pol uh, political uh, arena, religious, spiritual, economic, or social. So the establishment, uh, the establishment usually thinks uh, they have a monopoly of truth and others are just detractors and impostors who want to maybe obfuscate uh, things, who want to make things, uh, uh, twist things to suit their, <laughs> their nefarious uh, uh, views or their nefarious uh, uh, goals. And so... Um, one may think that uh, uh, Dwayne and uh, the wonderful worldwide educators is part of the conspiracy to, uh, peddlers uh, club, you know, where we uh, <clears throat> we jump at everything and uh, we sing it uh, loud, out loud, uh, with vigor, and uh, 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 this. Uh, the establishment uh, that I've talked about, whether it is uh, spiritual or the media or the, the, or the, uh, the political uh, people, the controllers, uh, they would like to, uh, or the, the religious and spiritual, they would like people to think that what uh, other voices are, are, are saying out there are just uh, what they are putting out there is just some conspiracy theory. And that they have the real truth. So what are you talking about? What do you say about this, Dwayne, that you could be considered a conspiracy peddler? Well, that's a given, Charles. So uh, I see that, and uh, I actually expect it, and it's fine. And so that becomes a challenge. What's interesting about uh, being called this or that or whatever uh, I see it as an opportunity because, first of all, you have people's attention. So I'm not looking, like I've said before, I'm not looking to be liked. It's not about being liked. The sun is not looking to be liked. It, and no matter what people think about the sun, like I said, it's, it still shines. So it's not about that, is it? So what is it? So the personal self is more into the likes and dislikes. Oh, they said they don't like you. And so uh, do you feel bad about that and whatever, you know, want the personal reaction and whatever people say, I, I usually tell them I'm, I'm fine with everything. And I, I sincerely am. But at the same time, I'm going to say something and it gives me the opportunity to do it by the very fact how they reacted to what I presented. This is the fun part, you see? So it's kind of like in the movie Braveheart where, you know, they go through a few battles, you might say, but we're not battling here and it's not about harming anybody. But at the same time, you get a little more clever, you see? So with the confrontations, it's not about battle. Those are simply confrontations. And so uh, I'm fine with the confrontation because it shows that people are uh, paying attention and at the same time then I am I have an excuse or I'm justified or whatever I use that I pretend to use that as an opportunity to say something accordingly so just like when I'm listening to the Skypes or whatever I get ideas and I see things for uh, groups I just kind of wait till it shows up and all of a sudden oh there's an opportunity because all of a sudden here people have their attention in a particular spot at this time and so so I take, I kind of take advantage of that and say my part too, but in a particular way. So I'll create a group, you know, and see who shows up. And then later on, as I look at the groups, uh, they get pretty funny, but that's how it is. But for that time, it was said. And as, as time and years go by, all these groups we've created since Ava's, since for five years, created groups of 17, 1800 of them out there. Uh, they get kind of funny. Well, I I don't control the groups. 
but it's an opportunity. So uh, whatever they throw at me or us or whatever, uh, again, I'm fine with it. This is just how it is. And it, it's really part of the wake up. It really is. But you got to see it. I see it. And so these people that, uh, you know, it's it's kind of like uh, having a, uh, you know, parents having a teenager that rants and raves. But then all of a sudden realizes, hey, you guys have supported me my whole life. And all of a sudden realizing that, wow, I should be grateful and not complain about anything because you're still supporting me. So it's like that. See, so we, uh, you know, we go through our struggles in creation, but eventually recognize that the isness life is supports all of us. And all we have to do is figure it out how it is, how it really truly is, more so than, you know, our self-convicted, uh, our self-convinced uh, restriction. And so, yeah, it's a lot because life is big. Again, not taking it for granted. And it's a struggle at times, and I get discouraged too, etc. cetera. I, I get discouraged because I want to do more. And it's like I'm restricted here because I have to deal with others. And dealing with others is fine, but at the same time, I have to deal with the restrictions too. So uh, making sense of things does make sense. So, yeah, so here we are, Charles, uh, and the world is a conspiracy theory thought to be. And I was over at my friend's house the other day as a surfer and makes my surfboards. And he had just come back from the market. I said, oh, you went to the market and got your food. Well, he's very into much health. He said, yeah, I went to Sprouts and I bought this and that. And so I jokingly said to him, yeah, that GMO stuff that's marketed, that's just conspiracy theory, isn't it, Steve? And he goes, yeah, I, I think it is. I think it's all just conspiracy theory. I said, yeah, it just... It's just a bunch of foo-foo, you know, and uh, all these things that they're saying and the chemtrails and that. It's just all conspiracy theory. And he just, he just agreed because I was having fun with him because that's how he sees things. Because he's a good guy, but he just wants to see his world and that's it. So uh, I was talking to him about certain things, etc. And so, uh, but again, this is the world. I'm not going to interfere with what the world wants, but they're going to throw these things at us, and this is just how it is. You think? So it's all fine. All of it's fine. This is creation. It's always been like this. So you've got beautiful beaches in Hawaii, but you also got volcanoes that can erupt at any time. That's creation. And then you got to run and deal with it. A lot of screaming. So yeah, we've all been there many times. And, Slipped and fell in the volcano. Now we're back, so we get to do it again. Funny place. Yes, Charles, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Adrian. Well, as we're talking, I was just, just laughing at your friend, you know. Because all what <laughs> you suggested to him as a conspiracy theory, he, he agreed. GMOs, uh, the chemtrails, uh, the pollution all around. You know, some it really shows the his state of awareness. You know, even in very little things around him. I just thought when I was writing this out, I thought about it. The chemtrails are not a, a, a conspiracy theory. The smart metals, harp, and all the like, it's uh, destroying the environment. Uh, the GMOs, people that. Uh, uh, turning up with uh, cancers and and all the like, uh, the pollution of the of the water systems. Uh, I was just reading about. Uh, uh, I watched a v video on the bio sludge uh, in uh, uh, <clears throat> Mike Adams' uh, uh, channel there, Brighton. And it's really showing how the whole food chain is contaminated with this bio sludge. They will convince people that it's good, it's if, uh, it's natural. It uh, will help the farmers grow uh, their uh, their crops well. It's loaded with all kinds of toxins, uh, heavy metals. 
um, chemicals from the uh, from the pharmaceutical industry that people, you know, uh, pass on uh, pass out as uh, as uh, this uh, physics and all the like that it process. You see, so the whole thing is going over and over. They just recycling the the, the wastes. The toxins are coming back into the food chain and all the like. These are not conspiracy theories. Well, uh, uh, the corporation will uh, make its members feel that, oh, Dwayne, what Dwayne is doing out there is, is just trying to confuse people. Uh, he's actually a rebel. Somebody who was broken, was uh, broken off from uh, a canker, um, the corporation, and is doing his own thing there. He's a detractor and all that. And uh, ma many... I have many uh, many ekis that I try to talk to you about uh, uh, the new presentation. They say, oh, don't, don't just leave us with those distractions. Uh, uh, the master had said it, that uh, there will be so many uh, people who will turn against him and against a kanka, but uh, only the faithful will, 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 will stay the course uh, to the end. Oh, so... You see, but when you look at uh, at uh, matters uh, deeply, you find that all what you call conspiracy uh, theories, they are actually truths that are refuted, that are uh, that people don't want to face. They are facts. So, really. I'm really surprised, Dren. Uh Charles, <clears throat> my friend Steve, uh, I had, uh, one day I went over to his house, I uh, had some new surfboards made a year or so ago, and uh, yeah, it was probably, oh no, it was probably a couple of years by now, and uh, there was a lot of chemtrails in the sky, and so I referred to Steve about this, I just want to see what he'd say, so... What he did, he didn't know about chemtrails. I asked him, I said, I was sitting there, and another friend of his that was a photographer was in the house. It was in the evening. I said, did you see all the chemtrails today? And he said, uh, what, are, what are chemtrails? I said, well, look him up on the Internet, because he was on his computer right there. He's always on his computer. So he looked him up, and the first thing he saw was conspiracy theory. <laughs> first thing. And he said, well, those, it says right here it's conspiracy theory. And so I just kind of just didn't say anything. And I looked at his friend, too. And his friend looked at me sitting in across the room in a chair, kind of frowned at me. It's like, it's like, yeah, Dwayne, there's no such thing. OK, that was it was uh, body language, not the spoken language. So I just left it at that. I go, oh, OK. And I just left it at that. So this is where, you know, yesterday I was just uh, the other day when I was over there, I. I saw this from Sprouts, which is a health food store. And so I just kind of bugged him a little bit. That's all. You know, just uh, saying something funny. And uh, that's all because uh, it really referenced off uh, uh, the past time. But he didn't recognize that. But that's OK. So, uh, you know, he has his world, just like the corporation members or, you know, people that support the political system or what have you, religions of the world that create all the discrimination in the world, etc. You know, it's interesting when you really look at it, uh, there's, the, you know, the uh, we'll just use the reptilians or whatever have created all this, uh, the original invaders of this planet, but it's been going on, created all these different things, and it's all discrimination. There doesn't need to be any discrimination in creation at all. We're all free beings of life, just here to use creation as a reference to recognize the true reality, uh, the all is, and it's just that simple. But in the meantime, people create all this discrimination. And this is a huge distraction that equals nothing except more drama and more unconscious lifetimes. Something to really consider. There doesn't have to be any. Uh, it doesn't matter what body type you're in, if you're an alien and a bug, an animal, or so-called human. It's all awareness. It's the awareness. It's not the body. So uh, it's only to see that and recognize that. So that's where, you know, uh, the old references of God and soul and all these things. I don't use those because 
they all have their, uh, you know, little sticky uh, identities on them that are uh, distorted and they don't work. And so I had to create a new position to see who would uh, you know, take the time to recognize a little bit more, yeah, more defined. So this is the fun part. So, yeah, that's where it came from, Charles. That was the idea. Uh, thank you, Dan. Okay, everyone, expect new videos coming soon of the fermented juice and the water with water kefir, blueberry flavor, videos on YouTube, and if you're local to the Orange County community, you can come and watch us do it live in the local clubhouse. We have a Skype call that will also be airing tonight at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you would like to come along and share and contribute, you can see Mr. Tim going live every night reading A Journey to Real Freedom on Facebook at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And everyone, we have a Skype tomorrow, which is Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's going to be the first UK Skype with Kevin and Pierce. And this coming Wednesday at 10 a.m., which we usually have a Skype, will be the Bob and Sandy show this Wednesday at 10 a.m. And I, I had, did send you an email, Charles, with the three Your Choices videos with Marjorie Klemp, the chemtrail pilots, and the worldwide seminar that Bob and Sandy went to. I can send you another email unless you find it, and I sent it to you in a chat on Facebook as well. Yeah, because yeah, I actually saw what you sent last time. I saw it. Thank you. Oh, you got all three of them? Yeah, I got all three of them. Got all three. They're probably about an hour each. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what I would like to have now is John Ellis water. Do you ship it? We do ship it. Uh, if outside of the United States and Canada, it's going to be a pretty high shipping price, but I can find out what it is if you do want it. Like, I looked up Australia yesterday. Someone in Australia wanted it, and it was either going to be $75 or $99, depending if the lady wanted one gallon or two gallons. Because do you drink it? Drink it in a glassfuls or in drops or what? Yeah, we put it in. We put it in the juice we make in the water kefir, and then just drink it in glass. Pour it in glass, and we mix them. We mix it with other water too, because you only have to take. You could take like half a cup of the John Ellis water and put it into another filtered water. And after 24 hours, it'll change the hydrogen bond angle to where it'll, um, when you're drinking it, it'll get all the deuterium out of your blood. So it'll turn into the water from the machine after you put a half cup with and wait 24 hours. And you want to keep it in glass. That's what yeah, it's yeah. suggested on John Ellis's website. So uh, <clears throat> what, what you, uh, ship it in a, uh, one liter bottle, half a liter, or what? We have been shipping it in one gallon. One gallon. Mm -hmm. Glass gallon? If people want it in glass, we'll ship it in glass. But our best deal is shipping it in plastic. And then when you get it, you can put it in glass. Because when we ship it in plastic, you get two gallons. Um, and you only have to pay one shipping price because we can fit two gallons in one box. So that's that's kind of our best price right now. Otherwise, you know, you, you only get one gallon and you pay the same shipping price as getting two. Oh, but if you want... What is the price of one gallon? One gallon in plastic is $30. One gallon in glass is $40. But the glass, we can only fit one in a box. So you can't get two glass gallons at a time. So you have to pay separate shipping for each each gallon, each box of glass. And maybe glass will be difficult to ship. Or, I don't know. 
internationally. Okay. I was just I just watched the um the video today I was I said oh I must I was wondering because uh, I saw some people take uh, take it in drops. I was wondering I said is it like some medicine? I thought people could just put it in a glass and, and drink it or I didn't well, know that I you had to to mix it in some Yeah, you can just drink it straight. Uh, if you, John, I would suggest if you have some kind of health issues that you just drink it straight for a while. I don't know, maybe one or two weeks, just drink it straight, and then you can start to drink half your weight and body ounces a day of it. So you could start to mix it at that point. If you have serious health issues, that's what he suggests. Like people that are having cancer. Uh, he even had one guy that had lung cancer and they didn't have enough money to purchase a machine because you can purchase the machines and sh and they were just taking a few ounces of the water and mixing it with tap water and he ended up getting rid of his lung cancer. I don't know how long it took. Um, six weeks to six months, some of this stuff. Some people feel a difference immediately when they taste it. One lady that we were shipping it to in Ohio, she started to soak her feet in it as soon as she got it. She didn't have her neuropathy pain through the night anymore. So. I can soak it. Because it goes. it from, from China and soaking my feet in it would be a luxury. So it's better I drink it. <laughs> Well, like, it's not like regular water because the hydrogen bond angle has changed, so it, it goes through your skin. Regular water doesn't go through your skin, so it goes through your skin. It's even, like, questionable if it's actually water, you know, because it's got the hydrogen bond angle between hydrogen peroxide and something else. The, what? Ozone. And ozone. But it, it doesn't taste like that, of course. Um, yes, and and also uh, a shot of 151 rum, if you know what that is. Oh. Yeah, but it'll go straight to your blood, so through your skin into your blood, because that's what it does, is it, it gets the blood flowing to all of your extremities, so it makes it easier on your heart, too. Your heart doesn't have to work as hard to pump. Yeah, it reduces blood pressure. So people are getting got rid of blood clots and things in their arteries. Yeah, I think uh, $75 for ship shipment to ch shipping to China plus uh, $60 is 130 Okay, Kelsey, <laughs> we'll see. I'm very much interested in the in in health, maintaining my health, and uh, I have many health issues. <laughs> you may not know, I have many health issues. Uh, sometimes I I barely struggle, <laughs> even to put on my pants. Well, the juice is the best thing, the Jillian juice. Just the Sorry? cabbage. The Jillian juice, just the cabbage, kale, water, and pink salt, fermenting that and drinking it after three days. That's the best thing. And then, yeah, we add the water with ours, but. Yeah, I would, yeah. Like, to, I would like to drink the living water. <laughs> well, these. They do ship the machines because we're distributors, so we can we sell them for three hundred dollars off. It's twenty five hundred dollars in total, and I I don't I haven't heard anything about extra shipping to other countries, but I I told I've told people that if they want me to find out, then I can call or they can call John Ellis and ask if there's any extra shipping. But John Ellis he sells them for twenty eight hundred flat and. I mean, we're in the United States and California and there in New York. We didn't have any shipping costs. 
for the machine from there to here. And I didn't see anything on the website about extra shipping. Yeah. Now the trade wars going on between the China and the, the US showed things will be taxed uh, more. We have higher taxes. Yeah, Kelsey, I would, I would surely, I don't have the money to buy a machine, but I want to, I want to test of the water. I think maybe two gallons can, a start can uh, <clears throat> turn my health around. Mixing it with uh, either distilled water or anything like that, or any other water. So thank you very much for the information. Yes, Charles. Yes, that was the commercial, and you became part of that. That was cool. Yes, Kelsey's very good at this. The kids are having fun, so we're keeping busy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> projects. Yes, while we're on Earth. And so, again, uh, you know, anything can be done. I know it's very hard in Africa. Very, very hard. Yeah, I, uh, I already have a plan. Uh, I already have a plan. Uh, it's just that I'm now, I'm still unstable in this, uh, uh, where I am now. I don't want to get uh, cumbrous things that will need transportation. Uh, when I'll have to maybe relocate from here. And uh, I have a plan in the future to start a business with <laughs> John Ellis Water in, back in Africa, you know. So I would surely need a, a very big machine, Ellis machine. There's, a, there's an industrial... It's an industrial version, right, Kelsey? No, they only have this this one machine size type. Oh, it it works so. It works so. You well, can so. have it. You can have it going all day. Yeah, because uh, in Africa, the people are uh, have a lot of problems with. Uh, Good with water, waters, drinking water, and many people are developing uh, uh, diseases. Uh, this new age diseases uh, with uh, due to the food they eat, uh, the pesticides infected, and all that. So many people are sick. And then the water purification processes are not the best, and so one could uh, one could set up selling uh, Ellis water, and uh, people will like it because it's it's like medicine and it's water at the same time keeps you away from the from from the doctor and from the toxic medicines uh, the controllers yeah on John Ellis's website they talk about how you can use the water um, to like clean well water by pouring like four or five gallons in the, the water from the well will be clean for three or four years and when we board the machine it actually comes with instructions about how to do that wow yeah there's a lot of testimonials and information about cleaning up the well waters even with dull foods and the mold spores on johnellis.com and it's actually probably on our website too because I basically copied and pasted almost everything from johnellis.com even all the blogs and the uh, the tests there's a York lab test and I put them downloadable or readable on newwavewater.club and there was uh, testimonials where they were actually sending the machines out to Africa at one time 
and they were getting rid of Ebola with it. Wow, Ebola. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. There's an epidemic of cholera now in my country, wars, the raging wars between the French speaking and English speaking uh, parts of the country. It's a lot of uh, upheaval there. The politicians, they, they don't purify the water. The people just suffer from uh, waterborne diseases uh, to a very great extent. So, when the time comes anyway, it's I'm just uh, telling you a plan that I have, what I, I just uh, brainstormed on. I said, they are good. Because when I saw that uh, uh, you are already selling it there, you ship all over the United States, I said, wow. Which means uh, one can replicate this action somewhere else. So I said, it was a good investment, uh, passive, some passive income. I'm also into business. I like, uh, <laughs> so whatever you're doing, they really interest me too. Mm -hmm. We have our own stickers we put on them. Dwayne had stickers made and he found them for a really inexpensive price. So if you do do that, then we could all have the same logos and stickers. Yeah, it says new trees for all on them. So it refers to the new trees and the, the all natural environment projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. Time would tell, but uh, I look forward to getting some water for myself. Uh, I keep in my house and be, uh, mixing it with uh, ordinary water and to change the hydrogen bonding and help myself first. The show has come to the tail end, Dwayne. Tail keeps getting longer. Yes, yeah, so let's <laughs> do the new you. Yes, it will get longer and it'll be Saturday again, Charles. So you have plenty to do and plenty to report. So keeping busy yeah. we're here. Yeah, very important because uh, uh, every moment something's happening on the earth. Got to deal with it, new challenges, etc. So uh, letting people know so that they do have... Uh, you know, an alternative besides just uh, being the effect of everything here. So, uh, go ahead, Kelsey. Yeah, Dwayne, be, be, before we, 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 we round up, uh, I see uh, uh, the Russian, Anton, uh, he has a video channel and, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I watched... Uh, one of his videos today, you know, he tries to to like talk about what you are you are, what you are doing. He uh, he uses his own terms to to uh, awaken people. That is uh, his mission or something like that to create awareness about the matrix and how one can extricate himself from it and all that. His English is not very good on the uh, in the videos, but uh, yeah, I see he has a very large following. So my impression is that uh, Anton is setting himself up as a master or something like that. And uh, when you listen to him... Uh, talk uh, you have echoes of of Dwayne I don't know whether you've watched you follow what he's doing on online in YouTube no uh no I've seen it in the past uh, but no I don't because uh, because Anton is all over the place and um, you know it's like too many chefs in the kitchen <clears throat> Uh, yeah, and 
uh, you take something very basic and direct and simple, and then you start adding a lot of things to it, it gets very confusing. In other words, people think that just because they're collecting all this knowledge out there, which is understandable, uh, and it just it references the individual, but they have to sort it out. But uh, um, Anton and everybody else is doing what they're doing. Uh, each person takes what they do from it. Uh, they can do that. But through that, through what we're doing and presenting, once you uh, start doing the new you and start to recognize the all is, then you start to view, you have a, a better view of creation uh, instead of just, uh, you know, looking to the ideas in creation. There really becomes a difference. And so people get, uh, they kind of get lodged in these ideas thinking that they're special. And again, uh, you utilize the ideas are just ideas. And, you know, like we use the water or anything else, it's fine, but it's just something here. It's not the main event. And so, again, uh, in this particular, many times we're just we're just another idea floating out there and they don't see uh, the true reality life is. They're just passing around ideas. This is where they stay confused until they can figure it out. That's up to them. So everybody, again, has their idea of what to do. And uh, many feel that, oh, you know, as they're gaining all this, just like uh, with uh, David Icke and the Reptilians, etc., and David Wilcox and these people and what they're presenting. Yeah, they're just presenting ideas. So but if you don't have a real connection to the main source, then uh, you're just collecting ideas. And basically, you become entrapped in those ideas. You know, you look at the indigenous people that related to the natural environment as opposed to all these created ideas that exist today in a literally educated world. There's a big difference. And they were closer to the reality life is and exploring that. Where today people, they just chase ideas and collect knowledge and all of a sudden establish them many times as absolutes. And this is where they box themselves in thinking that, oh, I, I know this now. I know everything. So, again, it's it's going to be different with each person. But, yeah, it's uh, it's an adventure here to figure out. So, uh, yeah, the, the all is, the reality of it, uh, more than can be considered. Uh, fortunately, it's available. And uh, so, uh, yes, here we are. So, thank you, Charles. Saturday's come around fast, and so again, uh, yes, uh, have fun out there with the kids in Africa. They need a lot of help, so put something together for them, uh, because it only gets funnier every day, and they get stuck in a lot of places, so uh, everybody can help. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. It's all for you. Bye-bye, everyone.